everyone, and welcome to this episode of the InfoRunners podcast. And today we are going to be talking about a ship that there's been a lot of popular demand for us to talk about. The Reclaimer. I'm Dazine was here. And this is Hayes. And this was actually uh, by multiple requests to uh, do an episode about the Reclaimer. And uh, we do have quite a bit to say about it. Definitely. And if you, uh, there's all sorts of images and videos at this point. They've been teasing us with this for a while. And there's some things about the ship, and there's also quite a bit surrounding the ship that needs to be talked about. And first of all, this ship is so beautiful. It's an amazing ship. It's a goddamn sexy ship. Um, hello, Ripley and aliens. Uh, this is like a feather right out of their hat. Um, there's not many ships in Star Citizen that have this sort of look to it, the, that sort of grounded in sci-fi. A lot of other ships, um, you could almost say that this uh, deviates away from a normal Aegis type of a design, almost. Well, Aegis has those angles, and there are a lot of those really nice angles, though, on this ship. So when you look at it, it does have those angles. Uh, it's, it definitely looks like a it could be used as a military vessel, just saying, uh, if it was properly equipped. But that all being said, Salvage is coming soon, because if they're bringing the Reclaimer in, Salvage is coming short behind it, and that really is going to be the really beginning of a true end-to-end -end uh, economy with economies. Well, this is it. Um, after the 3.0 hits, the next thoughts are, what is in 3.1 and 3.2? Salvage is going to definitely be one of those systems that come in in the various iterations after 3.0. Um, but when we talk about salvage, it's a very interesting thing in Star Citizen because Star Citizen is an economy based on commodities and they've designed it in such a way that it goes from end to end. In other words, you mine it up, you process it, you turn it into something, it then turns into a component, and then it gets sold as a ship, and then your ship blows up, and where does the reclaimer come in? It chews it down and recycles it back into that loop. Instead of having from one end of the economy to the other, it ties it around into a loop. Yes, and besides being a loop, it really also brings in the fact that it sets in stone the idea of everything being destructible, everything being able to be a free, open world. Uh, being as if you blow something up, you can reclaim it. And if you find something in the space, even if it's a whole ship, you can probably munch on it. And this really also brings into question what can be destroyed. Is it going to be num 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 goodbye point Port Olisar as you have a pirate or go in there and chew it up? Or what about the ICC missions where you can go out there you have the star fairs. I mean, is someone going to be going out there and chewing them up? I know if you can, I'm probably going to be rushing there as soon as I can with a reclaimer and trying to eat those star fairs. And that also has dynamic missions, to, uh, like they've been talking about as well. Well, going back to the idea that it provides an element, it also gives the idea that um, instead of just loss through destruction, it provides gain for another party through the destruction of another. So um, I'm not saying that's encouraging griefing, but it could certainly encourage um, opportunity out of um, uh, someone else's uh, loss. And um, that's interesting gameplay element in itself. But I suppose when you're talking about uh, the gameplay arguments this brings to the table is, uh, well, you know, if you have a Rex Starfarer somewhere in the verse and someone had a mission to go out and get the black box out of that, um, what happens if you've munched it up the reclaimer before you could get there? There may be a mission to re get the black box from them, or they might sell you the black box. And I could also see very opportunistic orgs going to high mission area zones and just waiting to find out if the pirates take them. Not actually hunting down the people, but just watching. They're like, oh, they just got destroyed. Let's just go in there and munch up on the stuff. <laughs> So they've talked about the idea that missions could interact with other people. So like if a Starfarer gets destroyed, it creates a mission for someone to collect the black box. But then it creates a opposite mission where a pirate may go in and try to stop the collection of that black box. So, you know, no one knows what really went on. 
Um, but then what happens if you have a random person who just wants to munch on the ship that's not part of any mission system <laughs> and you've got these two little fighters going around and say, oh, fuck, it's a reclaimer. <laughs> and then they and team up like, to go yeah. after the black box themselves. That's right. They may gang up on the reclaimer and say, you know, oh, I, I don't you know. One of us it, needs it of here. Opportunities. We, we earn the money. We'll split the reward with each other and we'll just team up and gang up on him. And that really makes Star Citizen a living, breathing universe, unlike a lot of other games out there which you even let's just take normal MMOs you have missions but everyone does the same mission and even if there's some op opposition you now have a true dynamic with all sorts of parties able to be involved and that is really where the reclaimer coming in this early is such a good sign being as it's really interacting with the idea of a truly open world as well as the, uh, this is also helping cement the idea of ownership. I go find salvage. It is mine now. It is also cementing the idea of cre uh, selling goods. Because I go out there and collect this. There has to be a system for me to be able to sell it. It would be interesting how they do it. Like uh, the law of the sea. You Anything taken from the sea is yours to keep. Um, hopefully they will find that if someone else killed the ship. And you lay claim to the salvage that... Uh, appropriate systems are there for you to not be considered a pirate um i don't know how they're going to manage that that sounds incredibly complex um and probably open it to is. abuse but yeah but i think it's uh it's going to be a very dynamic and interesting sort of environment but again this means with the reclaimer you're definitely coming around three one three two somewhere uh early on into three systems uh as ready as these this footage is it really brings into mind the ability of these other systems existing. And that means that we're much farther along into Star Citizen's development than a lot of people seem to be thinking, because if you have salvage, you have to have the systems we just talked about. Simple enough. Yeah, it's it's very exciting once I start getting those other systems in, uh, salvage to mining, and then that links into production. We're actually so close to starting to get the economy rolling. Um, it's just a couple of patches away. We've well, never been this close. Enough about the just general idea of salvage and everything. Let's actually take a look at this ship. And this ship is absolutely amazing. And I'm just going to quickly flip over here to the scale of this ship. This is the first large capital ship. And I know that Based on our last video, we actually had some people talking about our term of capital ship. Uh, I'm using when we talk about capital ship, we're using it kind of in the size class, like CIG sometimes likes to use it in, as well as also it's going to be the core ship that a fleet is usually built around. And if you just look at this as you're zooming in on this planet, this is such a huge vessel, and it has to be to be able to do its job. And as you move up on it, this is where you start to look at a couple of the key features on this ship. Everything from, if you look at where the legs of it are, you can notice how they're mobile. You can notice the giant arm on a rail right under there. You can see where the floodlights are. You can see where the guns are. You, uh, you start to can see... Can you imagine that? If it could do mech leg walking... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I never thought about this. Wouldn't that be the most amazing thing ever? Oh, it would, but I don't think they're going to do it. But oh, no. it, that <laughs> this particular footage right there just really highlights all the key features of this ship. So let's start talking about, first of all, with the size, the cargo capacity of this thing. Well... It does have quite a bit of storage. Like just in scrap alone, it's been coded as having 20,000 SU in scrap, which is supposed to be equal to a full constellation worth of scrap. Um, I can fully see someone uh, teaming up uh, in an Avenger Warlock with a uh, Reclaimer <laughs> and then <laughs> punking some poor constellation with an EMP blast and then letting the Reclaimer come in, get close and, you know, blast the holes through its engines and then start to reclaim the ship it's a rather scary thought when you think about it by itself the reclaimer is not going to catch anything completely viable being as with an emp 
you have the ability to stop the ship. And then when you actually look at the weapon specs and uh, just reading this off of the concept page, you have two size five side turrets. And if you look actually in, I'm just going to pull this picture up for you. Right, right here and not ignore that little arrow. Uh, if you look to either side of the ship, there are very clearly spots for guns. So those are the side ones. And then if you look at the alien footage, you see this giant thing up at the top that is slowly moving and rotating around. That is your size five top side turret. And then finally you have four point defense weapon turrets. Four point defense uh, weapons turrets, which CIG has already said point defense is not just for missiles, but will also work on fighters. This is a heavily armed vessel, and as they've said, heavily armored to protect it from scrap fields. You know, it's definitely a ship that's going to be able to take the punches and probably punch some holes in something else. I'm not saying it's going to outmaneuver any ship, and it's certainly not going to chase any ship down. But when you think about it in a team environment, where you have smaller, faster ships to tackle down, disable a ship, and then this thing catches up and blows holes into it. <laughs> it's a really strong combat team, um, whether that be for pirates or perhaps bounty hunters who want to take more than the bounty. They want the whole ship. <laughs> it's well, it a, it's a very it. interesting combo. Mm, that's right. That's just extra profits. <laughs> extra profits. And the fact that the turrets on this are going to be very 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 diverse being as these turrets you can add floodlights to these turrets you can add tractor beams to to help you out or you can have weapons and even amongst the weapons it's not just regular weapon hard points they specifically mention in this that you can actually have missiles on it so imagine missile turrets so you're now adding this functionality and you think why would i want missile turrets or weapons on a ship when it when i should be having extra utility Let's just take away the combat idea. Let's just say you need to blow apart some of the scrap or something in the way that is literally in your way in a field or a giant piece of scrap that's hurtling toward you and you might want to fire a missile to get that out of the way. Think of it this way. If you have EMP-based missiles, that's the disabler you need to then catch up to that ship and claw. <laughs> <laughs> You're that's way too obsessed link. with using this as a giant military vessel. Not a fire military team. vessel. Uh, legitimate private salvage of other people's vessels. <laughs> sure. You can get the permission after. At gunpoint. <laughs> oh my. Uh, yeah. And there's a couple other interesting things about this when you're looking at it. And now we're going back to that beautiful little picture that I had with... Uh... Hey. Yo. Now we have this picture where you have your missile spot. Right where that little arrow is pointing, and I'm just going to blow this up for you a little bit more. You have an interesting question, which I had. Is that the drone deployment system? Are we getting drones that you can launch out via, like, a torpedo tube? Well, we haven't been able to tell where the drone bay is. Um, you think that, okay, a drone could be a missile. It has to go in a direction fixed with sensors. It sort of makes sense. But you also want to recover drones, so you'd want a drone bay, you would think. So perhaps we we don't know much about drones right yet. What they've decided to settle on, possibly could be drones. It could, could have be snuck missiles. in missiles. Yeah, they could have snuck it in. Don't tell us until they released it. Um, I'm sure everyone would love that. But um, that really does give it a bit more bite if it is those missiles. As you said, you know, an EMP missile makes a very nice pirate sort of ship to yeah that's yeah. A, a scorpion with a poison it's beautiful <laughs> well either way i really hope it's actually a drone delivery system because that in itself would is a really cool way of doing it especially if it's in tandem with actual other drones which can move around and grab things if you have some sort of like missile drones that you shoot out to maybe look in a field or maybe even like a flare, a slow. They leave like a slow moving, like low trail, so you can actually see in the system. That would be really awesome. Well, um, even sort of uh, exploration drones that would be doing surveying of areas to find high value targets over an area, that would make sense as well. 
And space is a big place. Even mm -hmm. if it's just one ship, it could be in multiple pieces. And, of course, you also have the fact that we were talking about its big legs. Let's talk about the fact that these big legs here are like cutlass uh, engines on steroids. These legs are able to not just go help you land and go forward. They're also able to have a little bit of tilt in each direction, which may give this thing when fully loaded the maneuverability it needs to actually be able to land on planets as well as not just planets, but maneuver through these very tight fields without having too much trouble. When you look at it, the pins and the joints on the engines actually have a multiple level of flexibility. Um, it's possible it could even push directly along your um, left and right sort of strafe axis, um, which would the uh, idea behind this is giving it a great deal of maneuverability, let's say, to move a, around a ship in close proximity with a great level of control. So while the Reclaimer may not be a fast ship going in a straight line, it's probably going to be the most maneuverable capital ship at sort of close ranges to manipulate itself so it could get better angles for its salvaging arm. And I think that will make it one of the most interesting ships to fly and maneuver as a large capital ship. Yes, and there's an interesting feature here that a lot of people are not as uh, don't seem to be as hyped about it as uh, as at least I know we are. Uh, let's take a look quickly at something that may be a complaint to some people, which is the cockpit. The cockpit looks like it has a horrible view. It is nicely armored and protected, but if you looked back into that nice little set of videos where you were going through the interior, there are a lot of consoles in this ship, and. And Dave also mentioned that there's, uh, what was it, two remote turrets on this thing. And there's two remote turret stations, mm -hmm. one of them, and they're recessed into the ship, so they're not even in, they're behind the main um, cockpit area. And this is really interesting because in order to run those remote turrets, they need a full, um, that render texture to be able to have good visibility to make them useful. Um, this is like the first ship where we're going to see probably the future of how remote turret or remote piloting and remote operation is going to be operating. So, you know, the Reclaimer is the first of many big things to come. Well, the thing that's exciting about this is with these all these interior consoles, could you in, in fly the ship from a console? Are we looking at the future of that and this being maybe tested out for like the battle bridge of your 890 jump? Which, if it's a properly built battle bridge is probably fully on the inside of a of the ship where you can't actually hit it Thus i it think they will they're already moving all the mfds to render to texture they can stick that and any other sort of a feed from outside and mix it in together with absolutely no problem um i think this is a really important thing for star citizen where cockpit visibility is a lot less important the visibility out of a turret is a lot less important because if you can remote control those things a camera set on the top of there has a much better field of view um, if it's set up to do so, or multiple points of view. If you have multiple sort of MFDs showing the display readouts in different directions, like uh, side mirrors and rear view, um, suddenly this is getting really exciting. The things they can do in this will, the really crappy <laughs> cockpit views suddenly won't matter as much anymore. Well, especially important on this ship because looking at the cockpit view on this, I'm wondering if there's going to be a lot more camera spots or something to compensate for that because this ship is going to be really hard to navigate in a maybe tight debris field or asteroid field if that is all you got for a cockpit view. Yeah, I, I agree. For the sort of work this is going to do, it's going to need side mirrors. It's going to need, you know, sort of like when you park a car with those modern cameras that shows that top-down view of the car and shows you the left, right, below. And so when you park right in that little thing you could probably never do unless you had that camera system, that's what the Reclaimer needs to navigate around debris fields. Yes. And all of that combined is really making this such a great ship. And... Again, as we've been saying this entire episode, the fact that all of these systems are in here and it, these systems each seem to be requiring different parts that will are part of the big whole of Star Citizen. This ship this early is a herald of great things to come and how far they actually are compared to what we're seeing now. Mm. 
Um, so like going to the back of the ship, um, it's supposed to be 20,000 SU <laughs> in salvage cargo, right? Um, that's a lot of cargo. And I know this is a big ship, but in order to fit that much cargo in an interior enclosure, I reckon they'd have to cut off the entire half end of the ship. And that would be just a huge cargo hold to literally shovel scrap into it. Um, and I think that's, that's, if you can just shovel scrap into it, why couldn't you use that for ore? I fully understand you can't use it for cargo. It's not locked down. It's loose running. Um, but I don't. If you wanted to go down onto a miner and like actually mine stuff using equipment like cargo-based mining, there's no reason why you couldn't use that huge amount of SCU to shovel in ore instead of scrap. Well, you could perhaps pick about up size. refined ore off an Orion and then haul it back um, to be sold. I mean, this. It can't be used for regular cargo, but for loose, um, unprocessed cargo, this thing will probably be able to do that. Well, and just take a look at this picture. I pulled up the size comparison chart. If you look at the entire back half of the Reclaimer, and hypothetically speaking, you look over at the whole D, and this is something Hayes pointed out uh, to me. If you look at all the boxes in the size of the whole D, there's all those spindles that aren't being used and how wide it is, and then the boxes and the space between the boxes. And then when you open up a box, just imagine how you pack stuff. There's space in there. If you take, just imagine cramming all of that down to the raw stuff, you can probably store as much raw stuff as that uh, whole D there. With the caveat that, that it's raw stuff. Yeah, it's not sorted. It's all packed in nice and tightly. Um, there's no wasted space. It's all in one very large contained hull. Like like with the Banu Merchantman, its hull is just one huge fat area. And so um, unlike a hull D that has it very distributed outwards in small little areas, um, it's also condensed. So it's, it's very likely that entire back section is like a bit of a pickup truck and they shovel in the scrap. Um, so I, I see no reason why you couldn't use that for mining ore because it's, you know, non-volatile, you just shovel it all in, um, which means planet-side mining, using uh, planet-side mining sort of cargo, like a huge cargo box that drills in and sets up a mining platform, they've shown us these pitches, um, would be a thing. Or perhaps picking up mining ore from an Orion that's processed its ore and acting as a much more heavily fortified hull D. It, it offers, uh, you know, a couple of more use cases for a reclaimer. Yes, it does. The Reclaimer is such a versatile vessel. And back to something we talked about in one of our other uh, videos about a well-rounded fleet that's an exploration fleet. Uh, this is another one of those ships that you would definitely want with that because not only can it grab stuff, but once you get that raw material, you can now start using it if you have a crucible with it, maybe, or an Orion to help refine it. You might, in theory, be able to take those materials take it to a crucible and you could literally just uh, repair a ship from that salvage which really gives that versatility or imagine a repair fleet a ship that goes around has that you can have a self-sustaining org with its own little tiny ecosystem in the economy and when you think about it if the entire back section of the reclaimer is only going to be cargo um then the entire front section is very condensed unlike uh, ships we've seen so far that are like spiral staircase and hallways where you get lost like AK the Starfarer and the Caterpillar <laughs> um, This is much more likely that the rooms are all going to be you know one after another closely condensed no long-running hallways um, This is a really well-designed ship with regards to its internal structure And again in theory this could have one of the best layouts so far of any of the larger ships and i'm really hoping it that it does because otherwise if we have another starfare mess on the interior it's just in a bode well on how not bode well for how capital ships are designed on the interior kind of gonna be scary if that's the case but again from what images we have seen and the way the ship's designed it's probably going to be the best design well, guys, what do you think? Are we right? Are we wrong? Let us know. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and as always, see you around. Catch you around. <laughs>